This is Radio Health Journal. I'm Nancy Benson. This week, how reflux can masquerade as a chronic cough, asthma, or sinusitis. And our diets are to blame. The most acidic things in nature aren't as acidic as almost everything in a bottle or can. We're drinking stomach acid. Reflux that doesn't feel like heartburn when Radio Health Journal returns. I'm Reed Pence, host of Radio Health Journal. If you enjoy Radio Health Journal, you'll also like Viewpoints, our sister show covering current affairs. This week on Viewpoints. We like to think of the city as this kind of amazing circulatory system. You know, it sort of draws people in, but then it can often sort of cast them out. The appeal of American cities and a plan to fix them. Then, learning about the captain of our ship, the unconscious mind. All that and more this week on Viewpoints. Listen to Viewpoints on your favorite radio station, iTunes, and Stitcher. Millions of Americans have had asthma, allergy, sinusitis, a chronic cough, or a scratchy throat for years. Or at least those are the disorders they think they have. Maybe they've even been told by their doctors that they have respiratory issues, but treatment doesn't do any good. In those patients, what I say is cough, bluster, and wheeze. So they make a lot of noise. They're the ones you hear when you go to a concert. Just when it's quiet and you don't want to hear someone coughing, you do. You hear these people, if they work in your office, they're always clearing their throat and making a lot of noise, and you hear them before you see them. This population of patients has non-pulmonary, meaning the lung is not the cause of chronic cough. There's a gazillion of these people. That's Dr. Jamie Kaufman, director of the Voice Institute of New York, professor of clinical otolaryngology at the New York Medical College, and author of The Chronic Cough Enigma. She says there are millions of Americans who've gone to lung specialists for symptoms like those, only to be misdiagnosed. She says specialists can do their jobs only when what's wrong is in their specialty. If you have a bad leg, bad knee, you see an orthopedist. If you have a bad tooth, you see a dentist. But what if you have a cough that never goes away? What if you have chronic throat clearing, post-nasal drip? What if you have asthma that's not asthma, that's not responding? What if you have sinusitis that's no better after the sinus surgery? What if you have allergies and allergy symptoms and no one seems to make any difference even after the diagnostics and all the shots? So I think there's a massive number of people with silent reflux with these conditions that cause non-pulmonary cough that are literally being missed by their physicians because they're not attuned to it. Wait, reflux can cause a cough and symptoms like allergies and asthma? Four out of five people in America with a diagnosis of asthma don't have it. Ask yourself the question, do you have more trouble getting air in or out? If you say in, you do not have asthma. End of story, end of discussion. But how does reflux do that? Isn't reflux a backup of stomach acid? Kaufman says yes, but acid can go a lot farther up than most people realize, all the way up to the esophagus into the throat without causing what you probably think of as typical reflux symptoms. That's why this kind of malady is called silent reflux. The assumption was that reflux was heartburn and heartburn was reflux. And you know heartburn. Everyone's seen it on TV. People bursting into flames, clutching their chests. Look at the anatomy from it. You have the stomach that makes acid and very uh, corrosive enzyme called pepsin. It causes a lot of tissue damage and possibly cancer as well. We have the esophagus, which has two valves. It is the tube that connects the throat and the stomach. And the bottom valve is called the lower esophageal sphincter. And the upper valve where the throat meets the esophagus is the upper esophageal sphincter. And then you have the throat. And the throat contains both the breathing passages and the swallowing passages. And there's a very sort of clever bunch of physiologic switches that open and close the right things so you breathe in the right hole and swallow down the other. Problem is that reflux from the stomach comes into all those places. And when it does, it can corrode the throat and voice box, prompting chronic coughing and throat clearing. Kaufman says silent reflux has cut short the careers of many professional singers, even opera stars. And if the damage goes on long enough, it can lead to esophageal cancer which has risen markedly the last couple of decades. Kaufman says lifestyle is to blame, starting with the acid-laden American diet. It has to do with nutrition, has to do with diet, 
has to do with consumption of soft drinks as a major risk factor, and it has to do with late night eating. People will basically come in with stories and they'll say, you know, I never had heartburn, but now if I eat and they go whatever it is, it's a trigger food for me. And by the way, the biggest trigger foods are, and that's not for everybody, but across the board, chocolate, coffee, white wine, nuts, especially cashews and macadamia nuts. No question, onions, tomatoes, garlic, and pepper affect at least half the population. Green peppers more than red peppers. Anything can be a trigger. But after the trigger occurs, most people don't feel it when reflux does its worst damage at night. We work longer hours. Maybe we work out after we leave work, go to the gym, take a swim, take a jog, and then we get home. Maybe we feed the kids. So what happens is Americans get home typically later. What are they? Hungry and tired. And so they eat and then they lie on the sofa or they fall asleep with food in their stomach and they reflux all night. Reflux all night is the biggest enemy we face. Reflux all night goes up into the sinuses. Reflux is not a chronic disease. It's a vicious cycle. So the more you reflux, the worse your valves work that are supposed to keep stuff from coming up. The more you reflux, the worse your esophageal function. So we see snoring, narrowing of the pharynx, sleep apnea, really narrowing of the pharynx, sinusitis and asthma with real inflammation in the back of the nose, up in the nasopharynx. We see these asthma-like syndromes, shortness of breath. Kaufman says almost every patient she sees has already been put on a proton pump inhibitor, like Prilosec. But she says you can't expect to just take a pill and eat whatever you want. If the problem is nutritional, the solution is too. The first thing we do is put them on a two-week detox of low-acid, low-fat diet. In a nutshell, it's melons and bananas, only fruit, poultry and fish essentially is your only meat. All the grains are pretty much fine. All the vegetables except no onions, garlic, tomatoes, or peppers. Nothing out of a bottle except water. We recommend alkaline water. Alkaline water means pH 8 or higher. And then finally comes the kicker. No eating within four hours of bed, no alcohol. If you want something in the evening because you're a little hungry at 10 o'clock, have a little pot of chamomile tea. Two-week detox strict. And start introducing things back slowly so you I can identify which foods and problem foods you may have. Kaufman also advises that patients get their esophagus examined carefully for cancer and precancerous conditions. She admits it takes a lot of effort on the patient's part to heal from silent reflux, but it can help people get over a lot of misery that they thought were asthma and allergies. You can find out more about Dr. Jamie Kaufman's book, The Chronic Cough Enigma, through her clinic's website, voiceinstituteofnewyork.com. Our production director is Sean Waldron. I'm Nancy Benson. Medical notes this week. The blood thinner warfarin is prescribed to as many as 10% of people in the Western world, and a new study shows they're getting benefits beyond what's expected. The study in the journal JAMA Internal Medicine shows that warfarin helps protect people from cancer. Researchers say people taking warfarin have a 16% reduced risk of cancer overall, including a 31% reduced risk of prostate cancer and a 20% reduced risk of lung cancer. Vegetables are good for kids, and a new study shows fish are especially good for them, too. The study in the journal Scientific Reports finds that kids who eat fish at least once a week sleep better and have IQ scores that are four points higher, on average, than those who eat fish less often. Researchers say fish should be introduced to children by about age two. And finally, before too long, odds are your doctor is more likely to be a woman than a man. This fall, for the first time, more women were enrolled in U.S. medical schools than men. Overall applicants to medical school have increased by more than 50 percent since 2002, and the number of women entering medical school has risen by nearly 10 percent since 2015. And that's Medical Notes this week. Thank you for listening to Radio Health Journal, a production of MediaTrax Communications. If you enjoyed this week's show, please leave a review on iTunes or share it with a friend. You can find more Radio Health Journal stories about health, science, and technology on iTunes, Stitcher, and at RadioHealthJournal.net.